Hello. I thought this week I'd have a quick look at a fun way to add a bit of colour to one of your pen sketches. Um, I'm going to use Procreate on the iPad for this, but any similar app, you know, Photoshop or whatever it is, will work in the same way. Um, I won't talk too much about the pen sketching stage, as, um, as you can see it's very faint and it's not the easiest thing to see what's going on, especially with my big shiny head going in the way all the time. Sorry about that. Um, the main thing is when you're drawing with a biro is to draw very, very lightly because that will give you the option of repositioning lines and changing your mind and then only at the end firming a few lines up. Um, if you go in too heavy to start with, it's, um, you can quickly get in a mess. So I took a photo of the sketch, brought it into Procreate and I did a quick um, curves adjustment just to make the white of the page a bit whiter. You want nice even lighting ideally for this to work nicely. Um, now I make that layer um, I choose the overlay modes and I, and I make it a multiply layer. Multiply makes dark areas solid and white areas transparent. So that will, will allow me to work on layers underneath the sketch without affecting it. So I can colour in without going over the lines. So here I've made a new layer beneath my pen sketch. And I've got a big soft airbrush and I'm just going to put a sort of gradient backdrop in. I want the car to be in a, a pool of light. So I'm picking various greys, some light, some dark, and just um, playing around till I get something that I'm happy with. So once the backdrop's done, I get another new layer. And um, I'm using a big flat, the, the standard sort of flat brush, I think it's called flat brush, which is a nice square one. Uh, I use it for a lot of painting because it, it has a nice quality to it. It gives the, the square edge gives it a nice painterly feel and you get some happy kind of random textures and things happening with it. And I'm just using that to block in all of the dark, the dark areas, anything black or dark grey. That can all be just filled in at this stage pretty much. I'm using the ellipse helper there just to keep the, the wheel arch nice and crisp. And I'll use the same technique to do the to fill in the window areas, the glass. You can fill it in quite roughly and then use the eraser just to um, clean up the edges afterwards. This will work as a kind of a, a mask or a template for, for things later on. It'll be quite useful to have that on a layer like that. So making another new layer and now I'm going back to the airbrush tool and I'm going to pick a nice uh, bright colour, not pure white because I want that the option of going brighter still later, but um, pretty bright. And I'm just starting to put in the, the highlights on the bodywork of the car around the front wheel arch mostly. And that's going to be the sort of centre, the, the focal point of the, of the sketch. I'm also adding a bit more light on the ground just around the car just to increase that spotlight feel. And now another new layer and I'm doing the orange graphic. So again on its own layer so you can draw it roughly and use the eraser just to trim it into shape afterwards. Now another airbrush layer and this time with a slightly darker grey just to get some shading on the lower, lower half of the car. Notice that it, it kind of uh, gets brighter as it gets closer to the ground where more light would be bounced up on it. Now another new layer and I'm using a white kind of pencil tool just to add some, some highlights to the, the, the brightest edges of the car and panel gaps and things like that. Any little corners that would trap, you know, reflect a little point of light. You have to be careful not to do too many of them or to, or to put them in too boldly because if you scatter them over the whole picture, it can get a bit distracting. They just start, they, they do draw your eye to them. So they, um, you can easily end up putting too many in. But if, as it's on a separate layer, it's easy to knock them back or erase a few if you've gone too far. So now I'm going to construct the, the wheels. As this is a focal point, I want this to be drawn in a bit more detail. So I'm using the ellipse helper there and using the edit option at the top of the screen just to stretch it around, making sure my minor axis is lining up with my front axle. 
And now instead of drawing the next circle on the same layer, I'm duplicating that layer and scaling it. I'll be doing this process, sort of repeating it several times, because um, having them all on separate layers allows you to adjust the wheel later. So if, if you want to make the rims slightly bigger or the cone, the dish slightly deeper, that's easily done if everything's on a separate layer. Whereas if you draw them all on the same one, it's much harder to, to make those kind of tweaks. So here I am re reproducing that sequ sequence. That's the outer edge of the alloy wheel, then the deep dish part. Then there's a kind of cone that sticks out again. And then once you're happy and you've got everything and you're all the, the layers you want in the right place, you can pinch those all together into, into one layer. So there you grab them, squeeze them together, and they end up as one flattened layer. So I'm having a bit of a thinking break and thinking what to do next. So I thought I'll clean up that front wheel arch. It's a bit too big. Add a bit more light into the bottom of the wheel and a bit more light on the top of the tyre and onto that cone that sticks out so much and just erasing that um, wheel arch. As you can see you can use the ellipse helper with the erase tool as well as the drawing tools. Just brightening that highlight on the front wheel arch. I'm wondering what to do next. So I think the, the glass needs a bit more work. So the glass being a big curved sheet of glass it will reflect some of that background colour so the far edge I'm just adding a bit of the background colour into that and also the ground and it's just it's more interesting to look at something that has a slight gradient on it than something that's flat now I'm pasting in the graphics so I found a an old Vauxhall logo online but it's the wrong colour it needs to be inverted so I've used the curves tool and made the, the white very dark and the black very light and that gives you an inverted copy. And now I'm using the screen, multi uh, screen layer mode which is the opposite of multiply. It makes the white areas solid and the black areas transparent. As you can see the black wasn't completely black so I have to use the curves there just to darken them slightly so they become completely transparent and disappear. Now I can use the um, trans transform tool just to um, stretch the picture around so that it fits properly onto my perspective. The freeform option there in the transform uh, transform tool allows you to, to, if you click and hold on one of the corner pins, you can then stretch it around any way you like. And you do the same for the uh, the flag. Just wondering what to do next and uh, I think I duplicated the sketch layer at that point. The, the, the sketch was beginning, getting a bit lost in amongst all the shading so that just beefed up the line work slightly. I've also added a bit of a tint to the glass because uh, tinted windows were a big thing in the 70s. Now just as I've boosted the black lines I'm going to brighten up some of those highlights as well at the same time. And I just felt that the glass didn't feel very transparent, it was still a bit boring looking, so I've uh, added another layer and suggested being able to see through the glass slightly, so you can see the door on the far side and the pillar, that kind of thing. And nearly there, just a slight shadow on that uh, deep dish wheel, and onto the tyre. And I think that's pretty much it. I um, hope you found that useful and picked up a few tips. Uh, I think the whole thing took about just over half an hour, about seven minutes of pen sketching and 30 something minutes of colouring in. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you for another one soon.